out here on next week, December the 3rd. If the Lord gives me something, you all know I will jump right out here and I'll zoom into Facebook. But otherwise, if not, we're going to take a breather on next Saturday, December the 3rd, and then we're going to come back on the 10th. We have Dr. Kevin Ward, who's going to be in the house, and we're going to look at a little different format on next week. You all know we like to do different things. We like to stir it up you know, to kind of keep people's interest. You know, we've had um, like Salathiel, when he comes out here a few weeks back, we had him come out here and show us his talents by playing the drums for us. On the third, like I said, my plan is for us not to meet, but on the 10th, we're going to have Dr. Kevin Ward, and we're going to do more of a, a stop stop talking and start listening. It's going to be an interactive on December the 10th. So you don't want to miss that. You do not want to miss that. All right. Okay. So y'all let's go ahead and get started. We're going to pray right in and get into the word of God. We're going to get into the meat of what the Lord has given me on today. Ho, 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 ho. I'm excited and I was nervous. But once I start reading this, you all will see why. So let's pray and we're going to jump right in. We're going to mark the fourth chapter for those who have your word, your Bible, unsheath it now. Now is the time. So come on, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you. We love you, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah for this day, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that when we woke up, Lord Jesus, we didn't know what to expect in this day, but we knew, God, that you are faithful, God. We knew, Lord Jesus, that you are awesome, God. We knew, Lord Jesus, that you did not sleep and you did not slumber and you watched over us all night, Lord. And so we thank you, God, that we command our day, that we will be encouraged, God, that we will be faithful they feel, God, that we will walk out, God, with purpose, Lord. We thank you, God, that we may even meet somebody today that we can share the word of God. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you order our steps as we go out today. And Lord, we thank you, God, for disability in the church. We thank you, God, that you are removing barriers. And God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are pleased with what we are doing. We thank you, God. We invite you in and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, y'all. Good morning, Salathiel. Good morning. Look, before I get started, let me tell you, Salathiel did a Facebook Live on Thanksgiving, and they, uh, I believe they fed some folks at the church, at the church that he attends, Mount Hermon Baptist Church in Norfolk, Pastor Stephen Lewis. Salathiel was in charge of the Facebook Live. He was showing the collard greens. <laughs> he was showing the potato salad. Salathia, you did a good job. That video was right on time. It made some folks hungry. So, <laughs> so I had fun watching. So good job, Salathia. Good job. All right. I see Nikki has tagged Natasha. And um, so when Natasha comes on, we'll give her a, a shout of hello, Natasha. How are you doing? All right, y'all. Okay. So like I said, we're going to go into, you're welcome, Salathia. We're going to go into Mark, the fourth chapter. Lord have mercy. Ha! Mark the fourth chapter. I'm going to begin at verse 35 and I'm going to read down to verse 41. And today I'm reading from the King James Version. Okay. Mark the fourth chapter. Maybe Salathiel, can you put that out here for us? So everybody else who comes knows where we are. Mark the fourth chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 35. Okay. Mark four. And it says, and the same day when the even was come, Jesus said unto his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and said unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said unto one another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? 
Okay, let me ask my first question out here by a show of hands. <laughs> Interaction, y'all, by a show of hands, who likes going through crisis? I don't see anybody responding yet. Who enjoys going through trials? Who likes challenges? Mm. Who likes pushing their faith to another level? Any, any, any takers on this? Come on, by a show of hands, who likes going through crisis? Well, to tell the truth, I don't think there's anybody who enjoys going through crisis. Come on, I don't think we enjoy it per se, but we are, we are reminded that we will go through trials and tribulations. And so what the difference that makes as we're going through these things, there's a difference between whether we have big fear or big faith when we go through. Oh, thank you, Minister Regina. Mark 4, verse 35 through 41. And I know that I'm on target with this message. I, I am so on target because I got this message maybe a couple of weeks ago, but as we entered into the holiday season, you all know that right here in Virginia, we were challenged uh, with a mass shooting on this week. I don't, I don't know who all knows that, but I'm, I'm kind of putting it out there, but we were challenged a couple of days ago, the day before Thanksgiving. And so if you weren't there personally, you, you were touched by it because a lot of people visit that particular store. You know, it's the holiday season, come on and say amen. And so that became a corporate, like a citywide challenge of how to get through this. Oh my gosh. I could take a top, take a, a text right from this scripture right here, where it talks about <laughs> the wind and the sea. It came up. So the, the day before Thanksgiving, a storm arose in the city of Chesapeake. Come on, come on. I'm just kind of being real with you. That's why this was a, uh, a exciting text, but it also was a text that caused me a little bit of concern because the truth is I was shaken, Minister Regina. I was shaken by that incident and I was not there, but I felt it in, in, in my spirit. I felt the anxiety of the moment. There was so much confusion going on in that Walmart that I, I, I <laughs> in thinking about the details of it, I began to feel myself overwhelmed. So much so, Salatheal, that I had to come off of Facebook. I couldn't read another report. I couldn't hear another detail because it felt like the wind and the waves were about to overtake me. Yeah, Salatheal said he saw it on the news. He saw it on the news. Come on, come on. So I just want to talk about how we get through these crises because we know that the crisis is going to come. We know that the challenges are, are going to come. But what the Lord wants us to do is he wants to discover, he wants us to discover how to handle any fear that comes up and how to demonstrate faith because it's not easy. You ought to put that in the chat. It's not easy. So let's talk about this text. And just for a few minutes, I want you to, to reflect on maybe some situations that you've had, you know, where you know your emotions were high. You know that uh, your faith maybe was on low that day. And I want you to kind of just reflect on it a minute. I don't want you to stay there, but I want you to think about the bigger picture of how you got through it. I want you to look at how you overcame. I want you to look at that last challenge. I want you to know, and I want you to be able to recognize that when you came through that situation, of course, it was the grace of God who brought you through it, but it was your faith that kicked in. Because the truth is that sometimes, some situations that we have, you can feel it. Your faith will automatically kick in. I, I want y'all to see if it's, am I telling the truth out here? Sometimes you have some situations that you encounter that, that all of a sudden your, your spirit says, no, nah, uh-uh, we're not going out like that. You know, we have these little things. We said, not today, devil, not today, devil. Well, that's when your faith seems like it automatically kicks in. Good morning, Prophet Tina. Prophetess Tina, God bless you. Good to see you. Lord have mercy. I got some big, some big uh, guns, some powerhouses in the house today. 
Praise the Lord, Prophetess. Happy Thanksgiving. Good to see you. Hallelujah. But I want you to you, you guys to reflect on the situations, and I want you to see how much of an overcomer that you are, you know, because we have to discipline this flesh so that our flesh won't rise up in those situations, and we won't be overcome by big fear, but we will have big faith. And I know that it's a challenge to the body of Christ, because when we look at Mark, the fourth chapter, it was a challenge to the disciples. So let's, let's take a look. I want to look at some different positions in Mark, the fourth chapter. I want us to look at the position of fear. I want us to look at the position of faith. I want us to look at the position of the captain, and then I want us to look at the position of the church. Okay, let me see. Let me read over here, prophetess. I got to hear what prophetess is saying. Yeah, she said, blessings to me and my family. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, prophetess. I so enjoy your word out here, and I know she is right on target. If y'all don't know prophetess Tina Brown Moore, you go check out her page. She speaks it just as she hears it. Let's see. Okay, Blake is saying happy birthday, birthday to Nikki. Good morning, Blake. Good to see you. Glad you came out here last week to share with us, and I'm glad you're back here today. Okay, so we're talking about faith, and I want to talk about uh, these positions in this text that give us tools to work with. Mm, Y'all better help me. I want us to look at, first of all, the medical term for fear. You know, fear is not just, um, you know, one event sometimes. Sometimes fear is not just one event. Sometimes it becomes a phobia. And so as we're talking about disabilities, you know, in the church, a phobia is actually real for the person who's experienced it. You know, they experience, you know, rapid heart uh, actions, you know, uh, muscle tension, you know, dryness of the throat, and they experience phobias, you know, that, you know, for fear of heights or, or climbing or, or riding in airplanes or, you know, flying like the young lady said last week. And, and, you know, they have this profuse, profuse sweating. And so we're, we're talking about how to regulate those things so that we won't experience them or that we won't experience them as often, or that the, that God would be glorified from us demonstrating faith. And I'm not going to talk about a whole lot of medicine and things like that, but I am going to talk about how the word of God helps us to overcome. Okay, so let, let me get right into Mark, the fourth chapter. So if we look at Mark, the fourth chapter, there is a position of fear in this text. Because when I look at it, it says that the, 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 uh, Jesus told the disciples, come on, let's go to the other side. And then a storm arose, a great storm. And then the word says that they, in verse uh, 38, let's see, they told him, let me make sure I got the right verse for that. Okay, they said, uh, da, da, da. okay, let me see. All right. He was sleeping the hinder part. And yeah, verse 38, they said, don't you care that we're perishing? They were fearful. They were so afraid uh, that they woke him. And look, let me talk about for a minute. As I was looking at this text, what I felt like, you know, I, I felt like one Nikki that I failed probably a lot of tests. <laughs> I probably jumped ship, you know, probably woke up Jesus too soon. You know, because when we look at these different positions, and we'll get there in a second, but when we look at this, these different positions, well, I don't want to, I don't want to tell spill the beans yet, but the Lord desires that He knows that we're going to go through these tests. Let me say that. And what I want to do is I want to be the best Donita that I can be when I go through crisis. I I I I want to go through them you know, having the certainty. And I want to go through them having a, a, a calm. And, and, and I know, you know, that we talk about fear, you know, is, you know, it's appearing real, you know, I, I don't want that. I, the, the topic should be when, when Jesus sees me, and even if I wake him up, I want him to see my faith before he sees my fear. Does that make sense? We should, as a church, want him to see our faith. I, I want to move by faith. I want to study the word so that faith is ignited in me automatically. 
you know, that it's not a challenge per se, but it's another test that I know that we're going to win. But the truth is, Blake, that sometimes I failed those tests and I quietly apologize to God and say, God, I see last week that when I was going through that financial difficulty, I didn't have much faith. But forgive me, God, when I go through this next challenge, because I know it's going to come again, I want to have faith. OK, so when they woke him up, they were afraid, they were fearful. And the first thing that he recognized was he said, I don't see your faith. I see your fear. So one of our challenges is that when we uh, go through these situations, is God going to see our fear or is God going to see our faith? That, that's why we're meeting today. We're talking about being able to go through crisis and rather than having big fear, we have big faith. So my overall topic was, as the disciples looked at Jesus and they told him, what manner of man is this? My big overall topic is, uh, Minister Regina, what manner of man, what manner of woman are you? Y'all better say amen in this chat. Y'all better say amen today. Because when you think about situations and you know that Jesus knows that you're going to go through these situations, you hear the alarm sounding. Are you faith-filled or are you fearful? That's a big question for the church today. Lord have mercy. My bishop taught, Bishop Kim Brown, he taught from this text last week. And I said, oh, let me see what I can get from his, his sermon since he's looking at the same Mark, the fourth chapter. What he talked about was, y'all, he said um, Jesus didn't have to include the disciples in this trip. He didn't have to include them in this journey because other texts show us that Jesus had the ability to walk on water. If Jesus needed to go to the other side, Nikki, he could have what? He could have chosen to walk on the water. But my bishop said that he wanted the disciples. He wanted them in this. He wanted to show them. It was like an induction. <laughs> you know, he wanted them to be able to conquer their fears. And so we go through these trials realizing that he wants us, he wants us to know that we are overcomers. So I ask you today, uh, is there anything that you're going through right now that you need this boost of faith? That's why we're talking about it, because you'll discover at the most uncomfortable times that maybe you didn't have enough faith. Maybe you let your fear overtake you. And so we need some ways to adjust our thinking so that we can realize Jesus could have done it another way. He could have took care of it supernaturally. He could have done this or he could have done that. But yet he allowed us to go through it so that we could train our faith. Is, isn't that good? Lord have mercy. If when a, a situation first happened unexpectedly, if we could automatically say, you know what? This is only a test. God is just training my faith. But sometimes we wallow in it for a day or two. And then it's like, you know, your faith says, uh-uh, snap out of it, sister. What manner of woman are you? What manner of man are you? Okay. All right, let me read this chat, make sure I got everybody. All right, thank you, Minister Regina, for putting that. What manner of women are we? Okay, and so when I look at this, I look at the position of fear. Fear was out front. I don't want to negate that you weren't nervous. I don't want to say that, but I want to say that we have to, mm, Lord have mercy, that we have to build up our faith because fear will paralyze. Is that was, I, I saw that word jump up when Prophetess Tina said that. Yes, fear has the ability to paralyze. Let me, let me open this whole thing up so I can see what she says. Fear has the ability to paralyze and cause one to become stagnant in their pursuit, fear cripples. Yes, it does. Fear will cripple you. And you all know, I don't know if I've shared this out here, but I had um, recently had a situation, y'all, where I went to, and this was just, it wasn't the devil. <laughs> you know, every storm that comes is not the devil. Come on and say amen. But I recently, a year ago, had gone to 
Tennessee. And I drove that long ride, 11 hours. I drove it on my own, but I went through these winding mountains so much so y'all that I was so afraid to get back on that road to come back. I mean, the pressure was so high that I felt my hands sweating. I literally wanted to stop driving. I found myself, Prophetess Tina, at times I was driving 40 miles an hour because I was so fearful that what I felt in trepidation, what I felt during that mountain ride was gonna occur again. And so it became debilitating. I didn't wanna drive long distances. I didn't wanna drive to Newport News. And y'all know Newport News is not that far from Virginia, but what divides Newport News, I mean, uh, Newport News is not that far from Chesapeake, but what divides Newport News from Chesapeake? A tunnel, a bridge. I was so fearful, y'all, that I didn't want to go over the bridge. I stopped driving that way. I would put on my navigation in my car. I would put avoid tolls, avoid bridges. Just like Prophetess Tina said, the fear that I had that I experienced in that mountain driving, it was paralyzing me. How can I preach in Newport News if I can't get through the tunnel? How can I drive to Richmond to fellowship with my family? How can I go see my Aunt Regina if I'm afraid to travel the distance? Y'all better come on and say amen. It is real. And so that's why as I was looking at this text, oh, she said, faith, fear is faith perverted. Oh, Lord, I wish Tina was up here. Prophetess Tina was up here to share with us today on this. I'm going to bring her back out here, y'all. Fear is faith perverted. She said, catch that. It is so true. It is so true. Lord have mercy. Pastor Will, thank you for joining us. He said, thank you, Lord, for training my faith. And uh, Pastor Will Davenport, he has an awesome testimony. Just as your name popped up, Nan, I read your text. I said, I've got to get Pastor Will out here because he had some situations uh, in his body to occur. Has it been about two years, sir? But the Lord healed him. Lord have mercy. That's a testimony all by itself. We have another young lady who has come out here. When she comes out here, Lady Natasha, she has a testimony that uh, she was in a wheelchair for two years. And the doctors told her they were going to customize a wheelchair just for her. And automatically her faith kicked in and she said, no, you're not going to customize anything for me because I'm not staying in this wheelchair. Her faith kicked in. Fear says I'm going to be immobile. Fear says this is going to stunt your growth. Fear says, you know what? Fear paralyzes like prophetess Tina said. Okay. But we, we're, we're, we're moving into a time, and I know Prophetess Tina knows that because she's always speaking about the church has to have their faith. The leaders have to get their faith back. Come on. We can't have that distorted version of the church. We have to come to realize that we're in a position in the kingdom where when challenges come, we have to be more bold. Okay. Let me keep moving for a second, y'all, because I'm going to, woo. I'm getting excited just talking to y'all. Lord have mercy. I got to get some more folks out here to talk with me in person, y'all. So we talked about the position of fear. We talked about our position of faith, how the Lord wants us to go through these situations and to see our faith increased. Let me just conclude what I was going to say about me driving. Now, what, what it meant for me, y'all, was that I had to retrain my brain so that Fear won't come up when I'm driving. Yeah, I had to Google how to not have anxiety when I'm going through the tunnel. I had to find the word of God that I could repeat it to myself as I was going through the tunnel. I had to speak to myself. I had to align myself in faith saying, no, 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 we're going to go through this thing. We're going to conquer it. We are more than overcomers. We are the head and not the tail. And I had to believe what I was saying in order to go that distance. I'm just telling the truth, y'all. I had taken myself out of place because fear was crippling me. But my faith, which I didn't know it was my faith until I started studying about it. I just thought it was Donita. I thought it was my personality that said, no, we're not going out like this. No, it was none of me. It was my faith 
that kicked in that said, we're not going down like this. I'm going to overcome this fear of traveling. I'm going to overcome this fear of riding across this bridge or riding through this tunnel. Y'all come on and say amen. As I'm talking about the different fears and different challenges that come up, is there anything in your life? You know, what is it that you might be experiencing even today that God wants you to help? He wants to help you conquer your fear. Will you? And you know what, uh, Prophetess Tina, it's hard to be the visionary of something with, with and having fear because you won't see anything but right here in your local area because you'll be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. I know I'm talking good. It's hard to be a, it's hard to plan a global event. Am I true? Am I talking good, Pastor Will? It's hard to plan a global event if you don't see yourself going outside of Hampton Roads, y'all, I'm just teaching right here. Lord have mercy, Lord. Think about how you normally respond, you know? And I know, I know the impact of other storms has caused you to agree with fear sometimes. I know it has, but I am a living witness. I'm your testimony. I'm the proof today that we can overcome those fears by using some of the techniques and tools that the Holy Spirit gives us. Okay, so let me keep going. Let me keep going before we run out of time. But we talked about the position of fear. We can't let fear, we can't let Jesus see all of fear and no of faith, no faith. Come on, we want him to see faith. So we have to get ourselves in a position of faith, whatever that means for you. It meant for me, it meant reading the word of God. And I'll give you some scriptures about faith. It means, you know, if you need to go to a counselor and talk this thing through, talk it out. If you need to, uh, you know, Google says you need to confront some of those fears head on, which I did. I said, yep, I'm going the long way. This is the last day I'm going the long way. I'm going the short way. I'm going through that tunnel. I'm going to practice what I preach. Lord have mercy. I found out what worked for me. What worked for me, y'all, was soothing music as I go through those tunnels and go over those bridges. What I found for me was cutting that air conditioner on, having, and I'm just telling you some practical things that I did, having that air to blow up in my face as I'm going through. It, what, what it meant for me was not looking way down the road, but being in the moment and having no fear in that moment. I'm just talking about some practical things about ways that I had, Pastor Will, to build my faith and eliminate fear, okay? So we talked about the position of fear. We talked about our position of faith. Now let's talk about the position of the captain in Mark, the fourth chapter. In Mark, the fourth chapter, it says specifically that Jesus was in the hinder point or uh, the back part of the boat. Now, when I looked at this text, I said, you know what? If Jesus is in the back, then that means y'all that somebody else is in the front. Now, I don't mean that it's your trip. I don't mean that, you know, it's your way. You know, what I mean is that I feel strategically that he, Jesus put the disciples up front because the truth is y'all think about this in the circles that you're in, or even in the church that you're in, your responses are going to be different. Am I telling the truth? Based on who's in your circle. Now I have some folks in my circle who will automatically take the front. And so in, in those situations of prophetess Tina, I can normally take the back. But in this text, it said that Jesus, the position of the captain was in the back, which means my church is out front. I believe that this is strategic for Jesus to let us know that one, of course, we're the head and not the tail. Come on. It's also um, strategic for him to let us know that he's there with us and that he's taking a supportive role. I believe this text shows me that he's with us. Now, don't doubt that. Don't, don't have a fear of, of abandonment, but you can know confidently that Jesus is with me because the word tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He's right there with us. We know that part. 
that part you don't have to worry about. But in this text, I feel, Pastor Will, that Jesus is taking the encouraging apart. He, he's our supportive role. He's our wingman. Come on, y'all know about a wingman. Come on. A wingman is a pilot who flies behind the leader. He, he's our pusher. Come on. He's our goal setter, but he's intending to help us get through this, help us to navigate it. He is our safety in this text. I believe that he's strategically telling, <clears throat> telling the church that I need you to be out front. I know you're used to supporting. I know you're used to doing things. The, but And a lot of my people want to do things in the back. And I, I, I totally understand people who say, you know, I'd rather be in the back, you know, doing the back. But the Lord is basically, he's pushing the church out front. And he, but he, when he pushes us out front, he wants us to have a calm about it. He wants us to have a peace about it. Knowing that he's in that supportive role, knowing that he's our wingman. I believe that he is telling the church that I need you out front. I need you more visible. Come on, let me let me check my chat and see if that agrees with anybody. All right, Minister Regina said we're overcoming through the word of God. Yes, yes. We have not studied the word of God for naught. We're not memorizing scriptures for naught. They are useful. Okay, let's see. All right, let me keep on going down here. Oh, Pastor Will said it was two years ago that he had that situation, you know, with his body that he has overcome. And look, let me tell you just a little bit of his testimony. I would see him on Facebook. He didn't hide what God was doing. I love that about Pastor Will. Some people have uh, situations that they try to handle on their own. They don't want anybody to know, you know, um, you know, they don't want anybody to know what's going on, but Pastor Will, he was out here taking steps and he would say, basically, you know, I've, I've taken 10 steps today. I've, I've taken 20 steps. You know, the moral of that story is that you don't have to hide. <laughs> you don't have to hide your situations because you're an overcomer. We know that things happen, but what we see now is Pastor Will, we see his faith. Come on. So he said two years ago. All right. So let me keep going. Uh, Pastor Wills, I'm teaching good. I'm trying the best I can, Pastor Will. I'm trying the best I can. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Lord knows I'm not. I've learned this because I've experienced it, sir. And you, I know you have. You've learned it because you experienced it. For some of our preachers, he's having us to put our faith <laughs> in action. Put your faith in action. What you've been preaching all of this year, these years for your congregation, is it true for you? Oh my gosh. Pastor Tina said, fear will keep us from seeing the God in ourselves and others. It will. It will. Lord have mercy. I cannot imagine how fear bounces back and forth in, in churches, you know, trying to keep people stifled. And, you know, we, we experienced it when um, the gifts started manifesting in churches, people were so afraid of speaking in tongues that they would put you out. People were so afraid of laying hands. People were so afraid of seeing signs and miracles and wonders. How can we do that in our churches? And so it became a, a balancing act for many pastors. How do I share the gifts? How do I teach about the gifts if my church is not bold in the gifts? But that's a whole nother topic right there. Yes. Pastor Regina said the anointing flows from the head down. Yes, it does. I don't know if y'all can imagine, but somebody, somebody has to keep the faith. When I look at families, we have so many families, and I know I'm going in a different direction, but we have so many families who are in trouble, who are, are experiencing near-death situations. We have many families who are unsaved and saved, who are going through trying of their faith, but they don't realize that their faith is what's going to hold them together. Wow. Anointing flows from the head down. Look, let me stop right here for a second when she said that. Minister Regina said it flows from the head down. Here's what I thought about as I was reading this text, y'all. Normally, back in, um, in, in days past, and let me tell you, it's definitely days past, women and children were excluded from um, handling big situations. Y'all know back in the 50s, maybe the 60s, 
And even in our churches, women and children were excluded. So by default, Pastor Will, by default, the men had to have the answer. By default, the men had to have faith. But look at God. If the head of the household can have this extreme faith and not extreme fear, if he can have that mantle of faith upon him, how much so will the women and the children in his house have that same faith? If we say it comes from the head and flows down. Same thing with our pastors, as Minister Regina was saying. If the faith can be just extraordinary in our pastors, in our bishops, in our leaders, in the household of faith, how much more will it do when it runs down to the parishioners? Lord have mercy. Ah. Uh, that prophet is Tina said he's there just in case we fall while facing a storm. He knows. Pastor Tina, Pro prophet is Tina, he knows. He knows. But I've heard preachers say that Jesus doesn't waste anything. He doesn't waste anything. Even if we fall, there's still a principle behind it. Come on. The storm we face allows us to see our position in God. I hope this is making sense to us. Because the position of the captain, if y'all think about it, he chose specifically the crew that was going to ride with him. He knew the disciples. The word says that the Lord knows the hairs on our head. He knows that you can't swim. <laughs> he knows uh, that you're looking around at the water. He already knows. Before the boat hit the water, Jesus had already identified his crew list. He identified you. He knew, the word says, doesn't it, Pastor Will? It says, Lord, it says that he chose us. Not we chose him, he chose us. And so as we're shifting in this cultural shifting, there's a cultural shifting going on. If y'all know, uh, like I said, women and children used to be excluded, but now with this cultural shifting, even women and children, young people are coming to the forefront of our churches because they're needed, because they are needed. It's funny, Minister Regina, how sometimes people have prayed, Lord, send, you know, send more laborers because the harvest is plentiful. But then when the women and children show up, some folks are still stuck in fear that they won't allow those who God has now chosen. He's chosen now with people with blemishes. He's chosen now with people with scars. He's chosen people who the world said were disabled and had a disability because you prayed, you said, come on, come on. He said, you prayed to me and I've got your answer. So now what I need you to do is you've assembled the people I need you to assemble your faith. Are you willing to assemble your faith for the purposes of God? Somebody need to anoint themselves today as you go out. You need to remind yourself that I am the call. You need to remind yourself that I am anointed for this. Mm, wow. Pastor Will said this has been a very encouraging and challenging word. As it was for me, Pastor Will. I thought to myself, Pastor, I said, Lord, you want me to teach about faith? <laughs> and I said, when I failed recently in some situations, and he said, just you're studying. The word of God says that we're studying to show ourselves approved. He said, just keep studying, Pastor Will. I know we've fallen short in some situations. I know just yesterday. I may have, you know, fallen in my faith, but keep studying. Lord have mercy. It's encouraging and challenging for me as well. And so Jesus in this text, I believe that he's our safety because Isaiah 41 says it. He tells us not to be afraid because he's with you. He says, if God be with us, he's more than the whole world against us. That's what he's saying. We have to remind ourselves when we go through these situations, when we wake up, we know that we're a target for what the enemy wants to do, but we have to anoint ourselves in faith and say, God, I'm coming out. I'm coming out covered by the blood of Jesus. Come on. I have no fear. Oh, Lord, have mercy. One thing I want to share with you, Pastor Will, I want to share this with you, Nikki, as well. One thing I laugh about in this text, Jesus 
didn't move the storm. Now this is prior to him waking up or them waking him up. He didn't move the storm. He just moved the disciples. He moves our position so that we can, like um, uh, Prophet Tina said, that we can see God in that situation. You can see him more clearly out front than you can out back. In the back, you can. You really and truly can. <laughs> you can see the storm up close and personal. You can probably see parts of the storm that you didn't expect to see, that you didn't want to see, but your position has changed. The position in the church has changed and we have to make a stand. Come on. My position in the boat is, is indicative of my position in the crisis. The same way in this text that, whew, that uh, Jesus wanted us out front in the boat, in that physical boat, is the same way that he wants us out front in the arenas. He wants us out front in the crisis. Y'all better say amen. And the, the, the last thing I want to just share about this, about the position, because we don't have a whole lot of time, is that we have the position of the church, which is out front. The position of the disciples is that he is moving us to the front. Now, I, I'm going to stop right here for a second. I did this same, um, this same scripture or this same study previously. On my website, it was 2000, I think it was 16 or 17, something like that. But anyway, I did this same text and I talked about the reasons why he moved the disciples to the front. And what I decided, uh, Minister Regina, is that I'm not going to share with you other reasons or the five things that I believe that the Lord wanted to accomplish by moving his disciples up front. What I was going to do is to challenge you guys to go to my website and it's www.hisgraceforus.com. I'm going to put it in the chat too. But he, I, I, I put some reasons out there why I believe the Lord wanted to uh, move the disciples to the front. And I'm not going to share that with you today. That's going to be one of my challenges. One of my challenges is for you to go out to my website Look on the, the tab that says Birthright Kingdom Deliverance Ministries, scroll to the bottom and click on the emergence of leaders, the emergence of leaders and listen or read why, because I also have a little study guide with it. Read what Jesus, I feel like, wants to accomplish by moving us out front. One, we already know he changes us from being a spectator you know, we're not just going to watch this thing. We're not going to sit on the sidelines and wish it would be gone. No, he moves us from that supportive role because now he's in that supportive role. He moves us out to a leading role, leading ladies, leading men, leading girls, leading boys. We are now out front. Lord have mercy. Somebody ought to put that in the chat. I'm out front now. We are out here now. What you going to do? You're out here now. So I thought about just my last couple of points. I hope Nikki and Blake are still out here because you know this, this thing is real. Challenges happen every day of our life. It doesn't always have to be the devil, but there's some good things that the Lord wants us to make some good choices as we're going through these different crises. The first thing that I see that he did was he called it out. Jesus, when they woke him up, the first thing he did to handle this crisis, he called it out. He said, okay, when, sit down, come on. Some of us have to begin to call out those things that we're afraid of, call them out. And I'm not saying stay there. I'm not saying there. I'm saying we're using that text that, you know, we uh, submit unto God, we resist the devil and the devil has to fear. If I never share that I have a, a concern with the wind or, or I have a concern, uh, you know, with the open sea or, or I, Lord, help me because I have a concern with, with, with traveling, driving as a passenger. Uh, Lord, I, I, have a, I have a concern. You see, I'm not even using that word fear because I ain't trying to go back. But I, I have a concern with speaking in public. I, I have a concern uh, with not having enough vocabulary. I have, I have a concern 
You know, I have a, I have, I have something going on, Lord. I need you to help me with it. We got to call it out. Just call it out. It's just you and him. Just call it out. Lord, I have a, I have a little fear. I have a little concern, you know, with, with, with dying. I, I, I have a, a fear of change. You know, I have an issue. You know, I don't, I don't move so quickly. I, I have a fear with obedience. I have a, I have an issue, you know, with being obedient. Just, just tell him about it. Lord have mercy. God help me. Lord have mercy. We need to realize that there's some situations that have happened to us or are even happening to us that makes us appear marred. The word marred, it comes to me because, you know, the scripture says that the potter, you know, he, he takes good pleasure, you know, and he looks at it, he already knows what's going on. He's already identified these issues. And so what he's doing is he said, oh, you know what? You just need a little shaping in that air. You, you need a little molding. You know, you need some hands on. He gives us some hands on because he doesn't want you to deal with it by yourself. The truth is that many of us, especially in leadership, we'll try to deal with it on our own. Pastors, we'll try to deal with it on our, on our own. We'll be upset about some things. We don't want to tell anybody, but you can tell the master. The text calls him the master. Look at that text. He's the master. He can handle it, Okay. Second thing I want you to do, you have to call it out. This is a, a challenge that I'm giving you guys as we're going into our new year. I want to challenge you to do one thing before the end of the year. I want to challenge you to do one thing that you think that you can't do. I want to challenge you that there might be something that you've had some anxiety about, you've had some fear about, you know, and I want you to overcome it by participating in it. Because let me tell you something, when you overcome that, you're just going to experience God's presence. It's going to be so phenomenal that you're going to want to do it again. You know, you might have a fear of public speaking. You might have a fear of ministering to big crowds. You might just have a fear of, you know, going to the grocery store, you know, now because of what has happened at I want you to pray yourself up, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, of course, don't put yourself in harm's way, but I do want you to challenge yourself. I want you to use that mustard seed of faith that I know that you have, and I want you to challenge yourself. See what the Holy Spirit said to us. He said it in the beginning of the year. He said, I'm doing a new thing, but many of us have been afraid. We've been afraid of sharks in the water. <laughs> We've been afraid of the boat turning over. We've been afraid, you know, that we're going to be too crude when we say things. But he says, I want to do a new thing. We've been afraid of our blemishes and our scars. Come on. Come on. Jesus was the first person who showed you his scars. Hands up, y'all. Hands up. So I want to challenge you that before this year is out, those things that you tucked away and you said, I'm not going to deal with that this year. We're heading into a new year. And the Lord spoke, I want to do new things. So let me encourage you that you are that man or that woman of faith. And I believe it's true because you wouldn't be here on this Zoom. You wouldn't be here on this Facebook Live if it wasn't true. Okay, because you are now positioned out front. And, and his grace is going to be with you. Let me tell you that his grace is going to be with you. But it's some things that he wants you to do. And he's navigating. He's navigating us into these open seas because it's something that he wants you to see in him. And it's something that I, he, I believe, according to Prophetess Tina, that he wants you to see in your own self. You've been used to doing it a certain way. God said, no, I don't want you to do it that way anymore. I want you to take your time. I know you're tired. I want you to do it this new way because he sees something new for us. Come on and say amen. And finally, I thought about this song as I was coming out here. Salethi, I wish you were here to play the drums for me, but it says, fear is not my future. You are, y'all know that song? He says, sickness is not my story. You are. Heartbreak is not my home. You are. Death is not my end. You are. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. I believe that um, many of us are coming out of that um, fearful place because 
We're doing it God's way. We're doing what God says. We see him in his position. We're claiming all rights and benefit and authority and territory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let me look out here. Is there any other questions? Is there any other uh, thing or comment you want to share with us today before we head out? Because we're right at our 1045. You know, we only stay about 45 minutes. Lord have mercy. I so want God to be pleased with my faith. The word says, come on, it's our faith that pleases him, right? I don't, I don't want him to look at me and see fear. I want him to look at me and say, there's my faith-filled daughter. There's my faith-filled son. And they're doing it just like I knew they could. Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray very quickly. And again, we won't be out here next week, December the 3rd, but we'll be back again on December the 10th, unless the Lord give me a special word for next week. All right, so let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for your word, God. We thank you, God, that in you, we can do everything, Lord. Oh, Lord, our faith is soaring to a new level today, God, because we know, Lord Jesus, that you are with us, God. And so, Lord, we're no longer bound by fear. Lord, we're no longer in the midst of that situation feeling overwhelmed and feeling exhausted and feeling anxious. But by faith, we see ourselves walking out of this situation, Lord, and we command every situation, every wind that has rose up against us to settle down. We speak in the name of Jesus, peace be still. We speak even to the enemy that begins to speak in our ears. We shut you down now. You can no longer speak to us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we exercise our faith as we're coming into this new year that we're walking by faith, that we're living by faith. And we thank you, God, for even uncommon faith, Lord Jesus, faith that has never been seen like this before, God, you're gonna see it in us. And so we thank you, God, that your word, ha, huh, your word, what manner of man are we? What manner of woman are we? We are your faith-filled people. And so we thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We speak peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. I have so loved coming out here with y'all. Again, I'm Dr. Danita Edwards, host of Disability in the Church Live. Hallelujah. Y'all go out this week and be blessed.